this is the change log. I don't actually have a change log for this program. I couldn't find a change log. Um, this is just uh, if you don't already have uh, your own change log made, you can you can make one in Debreate. You can make one here. Uh, we can import some file from the import some information from the controls page. Uh, package is QJoyPad pad and the version the maintainer the email address the distribution uh, I'm gonna put natty because that's the distribution of Ubuntu that I'm on and the default the default place to put change logs are um, in the user share doc and project name folder uh, but you can you can change that if you want to put your change log somewhere else so here's where you'd write um, some change, some whatever changes you made there, and then uh, whatever else. And then you hit the add button, and it puts an entry into the change log, and it gives it the uh, timestamp and everything. And if you want to add another entry, some more changes. So, and get that, and this would be another entry. Of course, we would use a different version. And you can edit this. So, if this was the next version, it should actually say like 4.1.1 or something. Okay. Okay, I believe that's everything on that page. And if you have a copyright, you can put it in here. So, copyright, so and so. I can't remember the name of the uh, the author of this program, so I'm just going to put so and so. <laughs> And I also want to add an option, I don't have it right here, an option to create man pages, or manual pages, whatever they're called. Uh, it's not available yet. I'm not all that familiar with man pages, so I don't know how to implement that yet. So if you don't have man pages for your package or your program already created, you can create them in, in Debreate. Okay, here is where it gives you the option to make a menu entry and if you're just packaging pictures or something like that you're not going to want to make a menu e entry most likely but because we're packaging a graphical a graphical program um, it's likely that we will want to make a menu entry and uh, so so it will end up in our in our start menu so we're going to go ahead and make a menu entry and if we have one already saved we can open it here but I don't have one already made so I'm gonna go ahead and start it. so this program so in our menu it is going to be called QJoyPad it is an application the executable because the executable is located in the path of the um, of the operating system, we can just give it the executable's name, the program, which would be QJoyPad. If it was not located in the path, then the um, operating system's path, we would have to give it the full path name to the executable. So it, this would be uh, user bin uh, Q joypad or wherever your executable is located but since it's on the path we're just going to call it give it q joypad and we don't want this to run in the terminal because it is a graphical it is a GUI it's a graphical program uh, comment this is what shows up if you hover your mouse over the uh, the name over the icon 
uh, we'll call this map uh, map joystick buttons and we can give it an icon file and let's see the icons the icons are going to be installed to um, user share pix maps and the folder is qjoypad I believe it's either qjoypad or qjoypad4 we'll have to look it up Let's share pix maps okay, qjoypad and I want to use this one right here. And that tells it where our icon is located. Okay, startup notify. Usually what this does, depending on um, what uh, what window manager you're using, I believe it's the window manager, or what dock or what um, panel you're using. Um, if you have this startup notify, it'll have a it, it, when 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 you click on on your program to run it, it'll have a little thing saying starting such and such program. Uh, for this program, I don't I don't want that. Encoding UTF-8. I don't know the importance of this right here, but I've included it anyway in a bunch of different encodings. Uh, all the ones that I've seen have been in UTF-8. I'm not 100% sure exactly what that does. Okay, and category. This this is what is going to tell. This this tells the uh, the operating system where the uh, the icon is going to be located in the start menu. So if I want it to be located in programming, I would choose uh, should be let's see development. I would hit development and I would add development to to this list over here and then my icon would be included in the uh, programming's subfolder, but I'm not going to stick that in there. I want this. Let's see. I put this as a utility, and utilities will be located usually, I think, in this accessories subfolder. So I'll add utility, and you can add. Uh, as many entries as you want. So if we want to put QT, uh, I think in this particular operating system, I don't think QT is going to be is going to affect anything. So if I added development to this as well, it'd be located in both the programming folder and the accessories folder. But uh, since this program is built with QT, I'll go ahead and stick it in there. But I don't think it's actually going to add an entry anywhere into my start menu. And you can also, you don't have to choose from from the selections that I've put in there. You can create your own. And down here it says there's an option that says anything else I forgot. Uh, I've I've uh, studied a little bit these menu entries and. And I think up here are are most of of uh, what's included in these menu entries, but there's also some other things that that I haven't included. I don't know if I will include yet. Um, for example, this name up here. Well, right now th this name is in is in English, but let's say um, you wanted to have a a Spanish name for your program. Um, for people who are installing your program on on systems that are using Spanish, 
what you do is, I don't know exactly how to do it, I think it would be name something like, uh, how does it go? I think it's, I think you do name es underscore utf8 equals, uh, and then you'd put the uh, Spanish name in there. I believe that's I believe that's how you do it. So so that's what this what this is good for down here. There are also some other options that I know are available for these menu entries that I haven't included. So if you know how to use them, you can put them you can put them down here, and they will be included in the menu entry. Okay, so I think we are done on this page. And this last page is the build page. We're ready to build our Debian package. Up here we see some options. Uh, this option is to create a checksum for our for our Debian package. Uh, this option delete the build tree, debriate when it when it creates. Um, I'll sh I'll uncheck this and show you what the build tree looks like. So it, it won't delete. I'll show you. Go ahead and show you what it looks like. And we can use the Lintian program to to check our package for errors once it's installed or I'm sorry once it's built and you'll see that there are actually going to be some some errors uh, when I build this package they're not actually errors they're they're warnings I should I should relabel it so it doesn't confuse people because the package actually does get built so okay once we're ready we hit this button right here it says start the build progress and it gives us the recommended name for our package. Don't have to name it that, but this is the usual naming convention for Debian packages. And we'll go ahead and build this to the desktop. Build this on the desktop. And go ahead and hit save. We'll see some progress here. Some progress bars here. Okay, here's that error dialog that I was talking about. Uh, errors were found after building the package and it saved the details to an error file right here you can open that and look at the errors you can also look at the errors here if you have details okay um, so these are just warnings really okay so we just hit OK and it tells us that the package was created successfully and if you want to look up more about those warnings or errors, you can go up here to the reference and it has a link to Lintian Tags explanation. So if you see a warning or an error on there, um, you can look it up and, and find out more information about it. Okay, so we've built our package. So now we can double click it or install it from the command line okay so there's our short description that we put in there's our long description some details about the package and it shows us what files are included in our package Okay, and I already have this installed, so I'm not going to reinstall it again. But once it's installed, uh, go here to the Start menu, go to your Accessories, and here it is, QJoypad. And there it is running.